Texas Tiger Digs. It's been a while since I did one of these videos and it's not my favorite things to do. I prefer going outside, uh, you know, uh, and doing some digging when I can, showing that, showing uh, roundups, etc. But uh, the weather has turned a little bit odd, so I'm going to uh, do something I've been thinking about doing for a long time. Uh, this is one of the subjects I was thinking about. I've told you before that I, I, I have, uh, and if you look back in my old videos, you're probably seeing that I have a, an inordinate affection for small parks. And uh, and to me, that's a very logical uh, perspective. The small park concentrates fines in a limited area. Now, I have had good success, good to moderate success in large parks, but only when I subdivide those parks into smaller parks partitions or smaller parks and I've also discussed that but I don't think I've ever discussed this I think that for a detectorist that is starting not you guys that have been at it for, for years or decades or, or, or quarter centuries but for guys who are just getting started it may not be a bad idea to hit a small park a small park that will give you some fines but I've told you before one of my major issues with small parks is, in any other park, I tend not to do well early. So I go back and I go back and then suddenly I'll get a groove. I'm not sure if I find what uh, an area that's hot or if my mind just takes a while to click in. But then I will begin to make finds. I've said this before, the ring park, probably the smallest park I've, I, have, uh, I have gone to on a consistent basis has generated most of the gold, most of the silver, and most of my rings over the last year and a half. This one small park, and I'm talking about very, very small. I'm talking about, I don't know, a half an acre, three quarters of an acre, maybe a little bit more, maybe I'm underestimating a bit, that is adjacent to a school, and it's given me a lot. I still go back to that park. Now, I have no doubt that I have diminished that park's fines, but I went out to that park again, found another ring. It wasn't a great ring, but it was a ring I hadn't found before, so that shows that that park is still not exhausted, and we all know that potentially there's no way to exhaust fines in a park or in any, any other, in a park, in a field, etc. You will not exhaust fines. You will miss something and even a host of people, some somebody, one single detectorist can come behind them and find something that they all missed. So basically what I'm saying is this, in a very roundabout fashion, in my opinion, the best way to learn how to detect is to hit a small park over and over and over and over again because you will find more finds, you will find more places to look, and it will begin to open your mind so the next place you go to, you won't immediately consider it to be exhausted. You will know that 90% of finding anything is having the right attitude, of, of finding the correct uh, uh, congregation area of people, etc. So that is the main thing. I am all in favor as a beginning or early detectorist in pounding an area till it screams. I mean pounding an area till you begin to hit nothing but zinc pennies. Now I'm not saying that that's going to make it a it's going to make it a pile of fun or a whole lot of fun, but the fun will come later. But right now you need to hit uh, like a, a park. Let's just I'll draw a rectangle here with this pen that is about to die. And I probably picked the only pen in the place that is about to die here. Anyway, uh, but let, let's say we got a rectangle here. This is a park. Uh, I tend, and I think most people tend to go into the heart of the park first. And then sort of work our way out to the periphery. And into the corners, etc. And we, we tend to get into a mindset. We'll begin to think that there's going to be something here and not there. The only way to break that mindset is to pound the park to the degree where you know that there's nothing probably where you're looking now because you've beaten it senseless. Then you will begin to think about different ways to go and different places to look. And you will make finds and you will free your mind up to 
be ready next time you walk into an area not to ignore that area in the corner of that building or that area around the small trees in favor of the big trees. You're going to hit them both, but you're going to learn that that uh, this, this, this weird corner here where nobody has been, you go there, you might hit a ring, you might hit a dollar coin, you might hit a, a, a you know, ring, gold, silver, you don't know. But until you go there, you don't know. And I'm not saying that that's a policy you should follow in hitting these unlikely areas initially, but as you go to a park and you begin to diminish the, the high conductive uh, signals, then you will begin to look at the mid-range signals, then you will begin to see the gold appear. And that's what happened with the ring park. I began to diminish the high conductive, conductive uh, uh, signals and I began to look more at the mid-range and then I began to hit gold. Been a while since I've seen gold, so it's not that's not that that's no guarantee, but uh, that is basically what I'm saying. Hit a park, hit a park, find a small park, you know, and hit it to exhaustion, and then hit it again and again, and then move on to your next park. Now I don't do this to to the point where it's stupid. I will beat a park, hit a park, and hit a park, and then I will move to another park. But I don't forget that part. So let's just say I have not as much time. Oh, I think I'll just stop by here. I'm going to swing the car for a while. I'll still hit that old park. I don't. I have yet to give up on a park. I'm close on a couple of them. But I've yet to give up on any park of any size. Because I go out and I'll swing. And then I'll hit something I've never seen before. I'll use a different detector. Or if you don't have, you only have one detector, different setting on your detector. If it, if it does allow multiple sets, a different coil or something, and all of a sudden, new finds will open up. So that's all I've got to say about that. Just don't give up the idea of pounding a park, a small park, or if you're a large park, it might take you most of a most of a decade in a very large park. But a small park is a, a good one to hit and hit and hit and hit, and you will eventually begin to free your mind up and your concepts and your your preconceived notions of where things are and aren't and you begin to look at unusual places and you find more finds and then that prepares you for the next park or the next park and the next park and the next park. So that's all I've got to say. Real quick one there. You know, not real quick. I don't, I don't ever do quick ones. But I just want to cover that little bit uh, since uh, it's raining and it doesn't look like it's going to stop for a while. I uh, will be, uh, I thought I would get this video up because I've been thinking about it for a while. And then as soon as possible, I'll get back out there hunting and, and uh, trying to dig up and uh, video finds. You guys have a wonderful day.